Hey guys, these are your notes for section 9.3. We're going to look at relative rates of growth. So we're not really, well, we are finding answers to limits, but we're really just doing limits in order to see, like we're going to compare two functions. How fast does this one grow versus how fast does this one grow? Which one grows the fastest? So three graphs are shown here in the picture. We've got the graph of ln x, we've got the graph of y equals x, and we've got the graph of e to the x. Now you can see that the blue function grows way more quickly than either the, the black or the pink function. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to kind of com make comparisons like that, but on functions that we don't know really what they look like. So um, what we're going to end up doing is we're going to we're going to take the limit of the functions. So I'm going to go, if I'm comparing e to the x and x squared, I'm going to do the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the x over x squared. And we know, just by looking at each individual function, we know that this, this graph heads to infinity. We know that this graph heads to infinity. I mean, obviously, our indeterminate, indeterminate form here is infinity over infinity, but we're going to like prove that this one grows faster than this one. Yeah, they're both headed to infinity, but this one's headed there way more quickly. So we're going to look at how fast is this one growing, its rate of change, versus how fast is this one growing, its rate of change. So we're using L'Hopital on it. I think we've done this problem before. We get infinity over infinity. So let's let's use him again. All right. So when I compare rates of growth and rates of growth, what I end up getting is infinity. Here's what this means. If this were a function, the top y values are so much greater than the bottom y values that turns this function, makes it head toward infinity. So what this tells me, because my comparison ended up being infinity, is that the top function grows way faster than the bottom function. Therefore, e to the x, the top function, grows faster than x squared, which my, was my original bottom function. Okay, next one. Um, we're, we're looking at three functions, so I'm going to grab two and see how they compare, and then I'll grab two more. I'll grab ln x and x first. So limit ln x over x. Whoops. Knew that was going to happen. We know both of those functions head toward infinity. So let's use L'Hopital on it. Okay, now, my answer is zero. That means my, my denominator was bigger than my numerator. When this turns out to be zero, it means that it's kind of like, you know, uh, something over infinity or something like that. My denominator was bigger than my numerator. So if I get zero, the denominator was bigger, that means it was growing faster. So x grows faster than ln x.
Okay. And what's my other one? I've got uh, ln x, x, and x squared. Okay, I think x squared is going to grow the fastest. So let me see. Um, I wouldn't want to, at this point, if I think x squared grows the fastest, I wouldn't want to compare x squared and ln x. I want to grab, I want to compare x squared and x. And you know, you all know how it's going to turn out, but you know, in case the problems ever get harder. Let's compare x squared and x. So x squared, we've kind of proven, grows faster than x. So x squared is the fastest, then x, then ln x. Next one, limit, which is infinity, so we have an indeterminate form. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I just kind of made an executive decision to put, if I'm comparing the two, I decided to put this one on top of this one. If it's my, if it's my choice to compare them, what about comparing them the other way? What if I put x plus sine x on top and x on the bottom. So the reason I like that better is because I can split up this fraction. This is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of x over x plus sine x over x. I like it. So as x approaches infinity, this is the limit of this is 1. This is the same infinity over itself. So this is going to be 1 plus as x heads to infinity, this becomes huge. So I've got something between negative 1 and 1 over huge, so this is headed towards 0. So this is 1 plus 0-ish, which is 1. Now, I got a value. I didn't get infinity, which means my top grows way faster. I didn't get 0, which means the bottom grows way faster. I got a constant that wasn't 0. And what that means is their rates always continue to grow in a ratio of this, which means they continue to grow at the same rate as each other. They grow at the same rate. Okay, so again, your three like choices of answers to your limits when we're doing relative rates of growth. You can get, you can get infinity when you compare the two, and that means the top one is growing faster. You can get zero, which means the bottom is growing faster. If you get any, any other constant besides zero, when you do your comparison. Any other constant that you get means they grow at the same rate. It doesn't mean like 
if you got an answer of two, that doesn't mean the top one grows twice as fast. Or no, we've already determined how to. I've already told you how to determine if the top one grows faster. That's if you get infinity. Okay, next one. Kind of vague, but I think it's really cool. Um, you know how logarithms with different bases, their graphs are slightly different? I mean, logs have the same shape graph, pretty much. But even when the bases are different, that's kind of cool. So you think that maybe if the base is like way bigger, that the graph might grow way faster or something? This is, this is going to be kind of cool how this turns out. Let's do a limit. And I'll do, I'll grab those two log functions. So log base a of x, log base b of x. And we know that, you know, logarithmic functions head toward infinity. Kind of slowly, but they head toward infinity. So let's do L'Hopital line on the function. Hmm. Okay. So derivative of a log is going to be 1 over x ln a and 1 over x ln b. I'm going to do same change flip. Okay, so hopefully you're with me. Same change flip. My x is canceled. Now, as x approaches infinity, Hmm. Well, my x is canceled. Okay, so let's look closely at what the, what's left here. Remember, a and b, a and b were just constants. So this was log base, I don't know, some constant, then log base, I don't know, some other constant. a and b were just constants, greater than 1. If b is a constant, do you know what natural log of b is? Just a constant. <laughs> it's just some number, and so is ln a. So this is a constant divided by a constant, which is equal to a constant. So they grow at the same rate. Because I got a constant, I didn't get infinity, I didn't get zero, I got some constant. And when I get a constant, that means they grow at the same rate. Uh, let's see, okay, that one did involve L'Hopital. This one, this last one, I tried, so I kind of worked it out already, and uh, um, it wasn't going well. I tried to do a derivative on the numerator and the denominator, and oh my gosh, it got so out of hand. So I was like, wait a minute, can I do this without doing a derivative. So I started thinking about it. Since this is a binomial squared, I decided to go ahead and foil out my denominator. And x is approaching infinity here. So as x approaches infinity, think about this, ready? Sub it in, square it. It's a big number. And then square, oh, no, 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 don't square root it yet, add five. Yeah, like that's gonna make much of a difference, right? When you've got infinity squared, oh, don't forget to add the 5 before you turn around and root it. The 5 is so trivial when you are subbing in infinity. Basically, this whole numerator is pretty much just x. I know, it's the square root of x squared plus 5, but the 5 is so trivial, it's kind of just like the square root of x squared, the, the positive the positive root of x squared, which is just x. So when, you, when we're thinking in terms of x approaching infinity, 
also, when we're thinking of x in terms of pro approaching infinity, if this were like a, if you thought of this as a polynomial, it's got a degree of 1 because this degree is, is higher than this degree. And so you've kind, you've kind of got, quarter, you know, if you step back and look big picture, you've got kind of like a polynomial up here of just x and a polynomial down here of 4x. As x, is, as x is going to infinity, this stuff just becomes like pocket change. Like it's just, it's there, but it's so inconsequential when you look at the, like the leading coefficients. So what I'm trying to say is, check out your leading coefficients. The leading coefficient up here is a 1. The leading coefficient down here is a 4. Your limit is 1 fourth. I know, I know. This function is never going to equal 1 fourth. You know why? Because there's a plus 5 under the radical and because, because there's all this extra stuff down here. But I didn't say it was ever going to equal 1 fourth. I said the limit. Like it's getting closer to 1 fourth as x gets closer and closer to infinity. Anyway, when I compare these two, I get a fourth. So since I get a constant, They grow at the same rate. Pretty cool.